they have always marched to the beat of their own drum. Their lives are not significantly affected by how others shift around them. A Sigma man is his own man. We've heard about the alpha male. He is brash and loud, and is obviously the boss of the pack. Then, there is the beta, capable but willing to take the sidelines. So, who is this Sigma guy? Shalom, my people. I am Sigma male Wolf, and this is Who's Out of Order. Now, on Who's Out of Order, what I do is I react to videos and news stories, then I tell you who I think is out of order. It could be one person, could be two, three, four, or maybe more, or it could be none. But it's my opinion, and that's the bottom line. All right, my people, we've got a news story here today from NBC News, and it is titled, Fire Memphis Police Officer Text Photos of Tyree Nichols to Five People After Brutal Beating, Documents Say. Okay. All right. Demetrius Haley took two photographs on his cell phone while standing in front of the obviously injured subject after he was handcuffed. Record show. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's get into the story here. Let's get right to it. A fired Memphis police officer involved in the fatal beating of Tyree Nichols took photos of the 29 year old after he was pepper sprayed, kicked and hit by police and text at least one image to at least five people. New records show. Huh? Now, here's the thing. I know a lot of it here. It says he texted to five, five different people right now i know the rumors going around after i did that last video people was going going ham in the in the uh comments um about it was uh haley's ex-wife or ex-girlfriend and tyree was messing with her and all that stuff here's the thing until the proof comes out that that is what happened i'm going to stick to what the family is saying and what you know all the major news outlets are saying uh because believe me if that were true the news outlets would be on that they'd be on it like a dog on a bone they would love that that would be ratings but we've got a lot of people going around saying that it is true and we we don't have any proof of it. now you show me proof of it i'm with you i'm with you all right so let's do this let's get into this video let's see what's going on New details about the death of Tyree Nichols. It's been nearly a month since Nichols died after being beaten by five Memphis police officers during a traffic stop. But some newly released documents are shedding some new light. NBC News correspondent Antonia Hilton joins us now live from Memphis. Hey, Antonia, so police released what are these internal affairs documents on Tuesday, and they get into very graphic detail about the behavior of the officers that night. Tell us new information that we learned from these. That's right, Savannah. So NBC has obtained these documents that are decertification documents that were filed to a regulatory agency here in Tennessee as part of an effort to make sure that these officers would be unable to serve as officers here in the state ever again. And there's a number of issues and allegations in these documents, but the one that has most disturbed residents here that I've been talking to this morning is that Demetrius Haley, one of the central five officers now charged with second degree murder in this case, used his personal cell phone to take two photos of Tyree Nick after he was beaten and bloodied and slumped over, as many of us saw in the video. And that he texted them to numerous people, including some who were colleagues, but others who had no connection to the police department or to the city at all. He admitted to superiors to sending these photos to five people, but investigation found that he sent them to six. So the department laid this out as part of this essential case to argue that this person was not only knowingly violating department protocol, but you know, not fit to be a police officer here in Tennessee any longer. And as I've talked to people here today, the word that keeps coming up is evil. 
disgusting. Mm. People knew how bad they, many of them have seen the video, but the idea that someone would take a video or, or a photo, excuse me, of someone beaten to the extent that Tyree Nichols was and share that with people in the community, they're having trouble, frankly, processing it right now, Savannah. Absolutely, just yet another layer of heartbreak here. And of course, it makes you wonder, what is families thinking and feeling hearing that, knowing that an image like that was shared of their son? And Tyree Nichols' parents were at the State of the Union last night, of course, as the guest of President Biden. He said, something good must come from his death. But have we heard from them on these revelations about the fact that this image was sent? You know, Savannah, I was thinking the same thing as this news came out last night, and then we all watched the family sitting there. And while, in a way, it was great to see them recognize, people give them a standing ovation. I also had a moment there where I was thinking to myself, imagine being this family, and one week you're going from having dinner with your son, he and his father went to the same job every day, worked many of the same shifts together, mm. to now being on the national stage, coming to D.C., and everyone watching you mourn publicly. Right. The family hasn't commented yet directly on Demetrius Haley texting these photos, uh, but they have made clear to make sure that people in the community, as they have discussed these things, know that as the family knows and their attorneys and the DA knows at this point, there's no personal connection between Demetrius Haley and Tyree Nichols. And that's been a major thing. They want people to not spread rumors about this. Mm -hmm. and they want them to remain focused on the facts of this case here out of respect for the family and the case. Absolutely. Antonia, what an observation to think there about that family being in that room, though it's not ever a conversation they want it to be a part of. Thank you so much for your reporting, Antonia. All right. There you go. There you go. This saying is not true. And until we get proof, proof, until we get proof, we're going to say it's not true. Stop spreading this rumor. Stop it. Y'all are being distracted by the real problem. And let me tell you what the real problem is here. The real problem is the leadership of the Memphis Police Department. But nobody wants to talk about that. But that is the true problem. Like I've said before, the fish is rotting from the head. And in order to save the body, you got to cut off the head. Here's my thing. We have a police chief that made that culture. That is the culture. You have to change the culture. That's it. That's how you change this police department is to change the head of the police department, change the culture, have a new culture in there. Get these guys checked out. Mental health exams at least once a year to make sure that they are stable to hit the streets. You have to remember that these people are human too. They have real human problems, just like we do. And they're on a high stress job. You can't, we can't look at them like they're just totally Superman or something. You gotta know that these guys are going through the same exact, the same thing that you might be going through or you might be going through or you might be going through that officer may be going through the same thing and when you're having a bad day and you're at work you don't like fooling with other people all the time so just think if you were a police officer and you had to start fooling with with people and you're having you're already having a bad day guess what this day might just get worse for somebody all right let's get into this man all right where was i uh that revelation was contained in documents released tuesday as part of a memphis police department request to decertify the five officers charged in the brutal january 7th assault on nichols decertification means the former officers can no longer serve as police anywhere in the state. Demetrius Haley, one of the five officers fired on January 20th, sent the photo according to the documents. 
He was also the officer who physically forced Nichols out of his vehicle during the initial traffic stop and deployed his chemical irritant spray directly close up to the subject's eyes. Documents from Memphis Police Inspectional Service Bureau said. This dude is just straight evil. So he was the initial one that grabbed him out of the car. He was the one that pepper sprayed him. He was the one that took the pictures. The culture of this police department is evil. It's evil. Now, I know people say, well, he was the first one. He was the first one to grab him out. It had to be personal. We don't have that proof. Find proof. Somebody, somebody send me a link. Send me a link of a credible source that is saying that this is true. Show me some, show me something. Until then, I'm not going to say that Tyree was messing with his ex-wife or ex-girlfriend or whoever. All right, where was I? He used profanity, laughed, bragged after Nichols was beat, according to the documents. Just evil. Just an evil man. We, 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 ooh, justice. All right. On his personal cell phone, he took two photographs while standing in front of the obviously injured subject, meaning Nichols, after he was handcuffed, the document said. Haley admitted to sharing at least one photo in a text message with five people, a civilian employee, two Memphis police officers, and a female acquaintance, the document said. See? Now, the two Memphis police officers that he sent it to, are they talking or we got the blue wall or whatever they call it blue shield blue whatever whatever they whatever they call their little thing where they don't snitch on each other are they telling are they are they telling well or are they talking because they already know the answer i mean they probably already have Haley's phone and they know that they he sent it to them but are they talking are they saying they know more than that or are they just saying hey we just got that photo uh, a civilian employee. So that may, must be somebody that just works at the police office. And then a female acquaintance. Now here's here, right here, right here. Female acquaintance. This is where the rumor mill probably is going to still go crazy. Because they're going to say, hey, that's the ex-girlfriend. That's the ex-wife. I told you he sent it to, to her. It says female acquaintance. That could be anybody. Any female he know. All right. During the administrative investigation, a sixth person was identified as also having received the same photograph the document said Haley violated police policies including personal conduct truthfulness neglect of duty and excessive force unnecessary force according to police the dissemination of the photograph violated the department's information concerning police business policy which states a member shall not communicate information relating to official police matters without prior approval or subpoena except to authorized persons a member shall treat the official business of the department as confidential according to documents Oh, so of course I don't, I'm not even on the force and I know he wasn't supposed to be sending stuff to people just like that 
Haley joined the force in August 2020. Oh man. Oh, he one of them COVID cops. Yeah, and that around that time? Yeah, he one of them COVID cops. So you man, that's one of them. Oh, come on. That's one of them desperate hires. That's one of them desperate hires right there. He COVID cop. So you know he didn't have the training he was supposed to. He came into a culture he probably was already, you know, because they look like gangbangers to me, man. They look like straight thugs. All right. Haley joined the force in August 2020 and was previously accused of beating an inmate in Shelby County in 2016 in a 2016 lawsuit. This dude's got a history of beating people. And I heard about this case. In that case, he was accused of being one of the three corrections officers who allegedly beat inmate Cordarius Sledge. I don't know if I said your name right, man, but you know, Cordarius. Yeah, I guess I did say it right. Cordarius Sledge. The suit with Sledge filed without a lawyer was dismissed in 2018 after a judge found he had not properly served one of the defendants with a summons. Haley was also found to be untruthful in his narrative of Nichols' arrest, the document said. You know, that's the one thing about police reports. You know, a lot of times... I've watched a lot of uh, of these uh, videos um, of their body cams with people. And I always notice, and this is where I think that they're, they're, they're un untruthful all the time. Well, a lot of the times. Is that in the body cam, there is certain words the police always say when they get ready to arrest they always say quit resisting quit resisting quit resisting they always say that and the person just kind of like standing there now i know resisting when i see it and a lot of times i don't know why they just yell that it's just something they yell the other thing is is if there's like a little tussle if there is a tussle, let's say that person is really resisting and there is a tussle. You always hear, get your head off my gun. Get your head off my gun. Now, you're watching the video and you're like, uh, is he really reaching for your gun? Or is that something y'all just, yeah. There's a few other things that they say, but I, you know, I don't want to keep y'all on that, but I just noticed that, and, and they probably write it in the report, re resisting arrest, blah, 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 this and that. So y'all need to change your procedure on that for real. Cause a lot of time the video don't look like what, we're, what, uh, what the report is saying. All right. Where was I? All right. In your incident summary, you wrote that you heard your partner tell the individual, oh, come on, let go of <laughs> let my gun go. Did I just say that? I did not read this beforehand. I didn't. I didn't. But I've watched enough of these videos to know that that's what they say. I'm telling you, they always say, we're resisting. Get your head off my gun. They always say it. I, it's just crazy how every every arrest has quit resisting, quit resisting, and then a little tussle. Ooh, 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 ooh. Get your hand off my gun. That's just a setup for I'm about to shoot you and be justified for doing it. All right, man. Let me get back. To, let me get back to this. All right, in your incident report summary. You wrote that you heard your partner tell the individual 
Let my gun go. First off, if, here's a, another thing. If you got guns and you got a holster and stuff like that, you know, if you have a proper holster, somebody can't just yank your gun out of your holster. Now you got to know how to push that button or tilt it in a certain way and get the gun out of there. So I don't know why y'all yelling that. All right. Because he ain't getting your gun out your holster just like that. All right. Let my gun go. All right. Before he was taken to the ground, the statement said, you were also heard making the same statement on body worn camera to your partners in the presence of witness officers. However, video evidence did not support your oral or written statement and your information was deemed untruthful. There's a whole lot of them going on, I'm telling you. But they got him. The statement further said, you never told the driver the purpose of the vehicle stop or that he was under arrest. Audio from the body-worn camera did not capture the driver using profanity or displaying any violent threats. Your on-duty conduct was unjustly, blatantly unprofessional and unbecoming for a sworn public servant, the documents say. According to the decertification document for all the officers charged with second degree murder, Haley Emmett Martin III, Tadarius Bean, Desmond Mills Jr., and Justin Smith. None of their body cameras captured the entire incident, despite policies requires them to activate it during all police encounters. Oh, that's the other thing I was going to say. Always happens when they're wearing a watch this. I'm telling you, if y'all watch these videos, watch this. They always say, they go me again. Stop resisting. And then all of a sudden, a little tussle happened and their body camera always falls off. Y'all need to fix that. Y'all need to fix that. If y'all got to glue it to his chest, that body camera should always stay on. They always fall off. If you notice it, boom. And then all of a sudden, we're looking at the sky. And all we can do is hear something. I watched one, and boom, hit, it hit, the, hit the ground. We're looking up at the sky. And then all of a sudden, you hear, pop, 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 pop. Cop shot the man. All right. Let's see. Haley failed to activate his body camera during the first encounter with Nichols. Huh. <laughs> uh, though it was functioning properly, his documents said Martin took off his body camera at some point and placed it in his unmarked vehicle. Mills and Bean both at one point removed their body cameras and placed them on the trunk of the car. And Smith's camera was not activated during his initial encount in interaction with Nichols, the document said. Other officer violations. See, man, before I get to that. This is what I'm talking about, man. It's deception. It's evil. It's the culture. This is not the first time they've done this. I'm telling you, they were so nonchalant with everything that they were doing from beating on him to afterwards to take cut not cutting on the cameras to laying your camera on the trunk getting you some hits in whatever y'all was doing not turning it on with the initial stop see the reason why you're not turning it on with the initial stop because you had no reason to stop him in the first place you did not tell him why he was being arrested Matter of fact, you didn't tell him he was being arrested. You didn't tell him why he was why he was stopped. He asked, "Why did you stop me?" 
this was just that jump by boy mentality, the culture. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this goes uphill. And all these guys were were minions. And we're about to let the culture still continue because we're not going after the head of this. It's going to still continue. Memphis, beware. Memphis, stand up. Don't take this. This, Memphis, this is your opportunity to change policing in your community. No more jump out, boys. No more pulling you over just for nothing. No more harassing the citizens. This is your opportunity, Memphis. Stand up. Stand up and say, look, we want y'all out. We need to bring something else in. This is not working. Stand up. But I don't mean stand up by protesting and just standing around and tearing up your community. I mean, do something about it. I mean, go go to city city council and let them know what's going on. And if they are part of the problem, you let you you make sure you get them out of there too. And if the mayor is part of the problem, you make sure that you vote the mayor out of there. You guys got power right now that y'all don't understand y'all have. All right. Other officer violations. The documents also describe alleged departmental violations, which include excessive force, neglect of duty, truthfulness, and personal conduct. Martin was found to be untruthful in the police investigation, according to the document. He reported in his incident summary of the arrest that Nichols grabbed his duty weapon before officers placed him on the ground. But the video evidence did not corroborate that report, the document said. Come on. Come on. This is what I'm saying. They always saying you're trying to grab that gun. Wow. That's not what happened, man. You're going to fry. All right. In his Garrity statement, a statement used by public employers during administrative investigations to ascertain whether misconduct has occurred, Martin failed to disclose that he punched the subject in the face and kicked him multiple times. In his statement, to the ISB investigators, he said he gave body blows. The document said that was him. Oh, he weak. He's weak. There's no way you cocking back like that with the man got his arms behind his back and they're holding him. You cocking back and you hitting him and you ain't dropping. You should have dropped him on the first punch, man. You weak. You weak. I saw you. I saw you going back like like a little mm, like a little girl swinging on him. You hitting him. I heard you say I was throwing haymakers and he still didn't drop. Yeah, because you weak. How you not hit a man like that and he don't drop? Come on, man. Martin's lawyer, William Massey, declined to comment on the documents and said he is gathering evidence. Documents for Mills said when he went to speak with Nichols' mother, you and the investigator did not obtain her contact information or refuse to provide an accurate account of her son's encounter with police or his condition 
So he was one of the officers. Him and Mills went and lied in this woman's face. Oh, you got the fry. Y'all gonna fry, man. All right. I don't think I see anything else worth talking about here. So I think you need to stay for who I think is out of order. All right. Now, the show is called Who's Out of Order. And on Who's Out of Order, what I do is I react to videos and news stories. Then I tell you who I think is out of order. Huh. Must be Mr. Haley. Can't call you Officer Haley anymore. You are evil. You are nothing but the devil and i'm not gonna say the devil himself i'm just gonna say you are like the devil punching this man kicking this man you were the first one to grab him out of the car you're yelling he grabbed my gun you're lying just untruthful you're taking a picture of the man i can see why a lot of these people are saying oh it looked personal but no it, it wasn't personal this is what he does this is what this man was doing it was the culture of this police department and that scorpion unit that's all it was they were too nonchalant about everything everything was normal taking off your your, your body cam not turning it on they knew when to when to turn it off turn it on when to take it off and when not to they knew exactly what they were doing this was not the first time they've done it this is just the first time somebody's died behind it that's the issue with them that's what got them if tyree wouldn't have died they'd still be on the streets scorpion unit would still be going the police chief would still have that culture in that police department now she's forced to try to clean it up but you are the problem miss you are the problem all right so if you like the video hit like uh let me know what you think about this story whether you agree with me whether you don't leave a comment let me know give me some feedback let me know also don't forget to hit the subscribe button subscribe and then hit the notification bell that way every time a new video comes out you are notified so with that i'm gonna say peace and be one